Hello there and welcome. Uh, so this video is very important uh, because it will teach you how to actually conduct your free sessions and close and make the sale. So probably by now you already understand that you need to to go through through the that process of you know generating these appointments and then have those these free appointments with your prospects and turn those prospects into paying clients so this is probably the most important part of all and what i'm teaching you right now is probably some of the best strategies out there so i've paid like thousands of dollars to to get to this to this level and i'm very good at closing and doing sales especially in a in a free session or over the phone phone or one on one and um, i'm going to show you how you can do that too how you can turn completely strangers uh, that never heard of you into high paying clients so this is a script for you know doing high ticket uh, high ticket offers so this is not like you, you're not asking like for for an, uh, like $100 or $500. You're actually asking for a lot of money to or not. It's not a lot of money. It's actually for the value that you are de delivering, you know, because um, I've already told you, like, you need to you need to think like of the value that you're giving, not of the hours or, you know, uh, for the prospects, it really it really is valuable to solve their problem. So you have to think in terms of that. And how you do this is, I already told you, like you, you just, you know, generate appointment, you talk uh, appointments, you talk with your prospects, you know, you qualify them. And after they are qualified, you book and you schedule this free session with them. And it's very important. Um, please watch this very uh, like pay attention to this because uh, and you will probably need to watch this like five times like three or four or five times and probably like you need to watch this now a couple of times do do some sales over the phone and then come back and watch it again and I guarantee you that you will see things that you've never you've you didn't see before um, because you you didn't have the experience to to see them and actually um, become aware of them it's only after you you practice then you get back to it and then you can see things that you you didn't see before because you're now at a higher level of awareness and that's why it is very important to to just watch this course watch this this part uh, a couple of times um, in in your like in your uh, in your journey okay so like i said you schedule the call you schedule the appointment or the meeting and um, before the meeting with five minutes before into into the meeting or, or the call you have to be in a quiet place you have to understand that there are no distractions there are not there are there aren't like people around you to distract you no facebook no like put your phone on uh, switch your phone on like silent mode or something like that and just turn off all distractions then you also want to use headphones so you can expre express yourself and, f and feel free. It is very important to not uh, keep your phone next to your head because if you do that, um, it will be very hard for you to, to have your hands free. When you have your hands free, it's like actually talking with someone face to face. It's like you can, you can put more emotion and trust into your, uh, into your words. And also another thing is you have to smile. So uh, I'm going to do a little experiment with you. So first, like right now, I'm talking without smiling. And when I'm starting to smile, you already see the difference, right? So now you can see like my voice is a little different and you, you will connect more with your prospects. And now I, 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 won't, I, did, I don't smile. And you can notice the, the difference in my tone or voice. So the tone is very important. You have to, to, like, to stay calm and like really focused and like build a picture of, of the prospect's situation in your mind in order to help him and in order to connect with him. Another thing is that don't agitate your mind. Don't 
before the call, don't read emails, don't scroll on social media, don't watch YouTube videos, just stay in silence before like, before like with five to 10 minutes into the call. It is very important because you clear your mind of all the judgments and all the noise. Also, like, like I said, close any tabs, social media or any distractions and focus on understanding the client and not making the sale. This is very important because sometimes when you are in these calls, like it, it, is very, it is very easy to be attached of the idea of, you know, making a sale and closing the sale. Um, and when you are focused on selling, you are, you are not focused on helping and actually understanding the, uh, the prospect. So I urge you to, to just let go of any attachments towards like a yes or yes, a sale, money. Stop, stop thinking about that and just connect with the client and try to be there and understand him. Like really, because when you do that, you will answer the right questions. You will be there for him and uh, the prospect will feel or her and the prospect will feel very, um, very connected with you. And you will build that trust and intimacy that, you know, it, it's very important that you build that trust and intimate intimacy with your client. Also have a notepad, have a, have a pen and a notepad in front of you at all times and take notes during the call. You know, when the, when the client, uh, when the client talks, you just take notes and that's how you do it. Now, um, when taking notes, how you, how you, how you take the notes is actually, is actually you like, you split the, you split the paper in two and on one side, let's say in the left side of the paper, you, you write down uh, things that are in, in, um, in, uh, in, in client's current situation, let's say, where the client is right now when, or, or the prospect is right now. And on the right side of the paper, you write the things that the client wants to, to get to. So actually you split the paper into two sides. So the first side, the left side is where the prospect is right now and the right side is where the prospect wants to be and you actually uh, you don't you don't take notes for everything you don't for for example um if the prospect says yeah it's interesting talking with you that's that's nothing that's not that's it's not specific it's not a result it's not a problem it's not a desire so you don't note that down okay when the prospect says yeah i'm i need i need to learn some uh, facebook ads then that's a result you know he wants or she wants something specific it's facebook ads and then you write that down in the right side of the paper so you have to understand that um and on the on the left side for example the client says well i'm dealing with a lot of stress and uh, anxiety and stress and anxiety, those you write that down because there are two problems that the that the client has. Another example would be, you know, I'm not enjoying, I'm not, I'm not enjoying my life. You know, I'm not present. I'm, I'm overthinking. You know, those are these are real problems. When when the client says, you know, I talked with a friend and that friend told me that um, he he's going, he's leaving the town, and uh, you, that's that's like garbage. It's noise. You don't listen to that. You listen to the problems and desires the prospects has, okay? It's very important this. You have to like really distill the, the noise because you know, some clients will just talk garbage. You know, they are gonna talk about, yeah, so I went to a wedding and for example, when you ask the question, I'm gonna tell you right now uh, in a minute, but there's a question in this script that asks the, pro asks the prospects like, what motivated you to, to sacrifice your time and schedule this call or have this meeting with me. And usually what they should say is like, yeah, so I have problems with my, in my relationships. That's, that's the thing th they, they should, should uh, answer. But usually the prospect would say something like, um, yeah, so I saw you on Facebook and uh, I really liked your posts. And uh, yeah, I, I, I thought that, you know, I, I can, I can have a conversation with you and learn some stuff from you. 
And um, yeah, so I, I always like to improve myself and um, and um, have, you know, speak with someone that uh, is an expert in something. That's garbage. It, the prospect isn't telling you anything. Like, you, what's his motivation? That's he, he wants to learn new stuff. Wait, what, what, what stuff? So you always have to, like, to, to notice exactly, like feel and identify the pain points and you know, the desires. There's a, like, there's a desire there in, in that answer, but it's not specific, it's not clarified. And your job as a, you know, as a coach and you know, th these things you know, take time to, to really hone and master. But your job as a coach is like to really feel those and identify those, those things. Uh, and the way you do that is you, you dig deep and you don't let your prospect like slip away and get distracted with, with his thoughts. As usually people are very distracted with their thoughts. They go to places that they aren't related to the call. They will, you know, they will go to a lot of, of places. And sometimes it's very, uh, sometimes I feel like, you know, I feel like the, the, the world is so distracted and doesn't know how to formulate um, uh, their thoughts and they don't know how to think and answer, you know? So that's, uh, this is a very important point. Another thing is to lose all judgments about, about the prospect and any baggage about the past. Um, for example, you may... I, I'm, I'm going to give an example. I have a client that, you know, tried to, to, um, to make a sale. So he, uh, she did 30 calls, you know, she did around 30 calls, 30 meetings and didn't make any sale. And of course, after, you know, after 30 failures, uh, of, of course, of course, it's not failure, but you know, you, you're getting tired, you know, you're getting frustrated and you don't want to just listen to, to people and not make any, make any money, you know, you, you want to help them, but you, of course, you, you want to see some progress. And if you don't see the progress, you are so like resentful and, you know, you feel so negative because you didn't do any sales and you just don't, you, you don't want to listen to them anymore. And you just want to like, I just want, you, 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 you will feel the need like to force on, on the prospects and just, you know, uh, uh, you have that like a lot of emotional baggage uh, uh, bubbled up inside of you and sometimes you will feel like to just, just, you know, release that to your prospects and others because, you know, you, you are so uh, frustrated and uh, unhappy about this process. But I'm telling you before the call, just, I don't know, close your eyes, meditate for a few minutes and just uh, release all this baggage from the past. It's very important. Another thing is to clear your mind of any assumptions, you know. For example, sometimes uh, I, think, I think of a prospect, you know, this, pros this prospect will buy. I I'm sure this prospect will buy. He, she or he has the money, I see. He's, for, for example, from the United States, or I, I know this is an entrepreneur, it has the money, I'm going to make the sale. And at the end of the call, I don't make the sale. And it happens like sometimes a person like looks poor, uh, he's like, or she is like from a third world country. And uh, I, feel, I, I, I say to myself, well, you know, I, I won't make the sale anyway. So why just, why put in the effort, you know? Why try to just listen and, you know, make this sale and help this person? He's not going to buy anyway. Why, why, why all the struggle, you know? But that's the person that buys at the end. You know, the person that I think well, this person is, gonna not, is not going to buy, this is the person that actually buys. And it, this happened to me so many times that I, you, won't, you won't believe it. So clear your mind of any assumptions. Don't judge. Don't say, yeah, this person has the money, he will buy. This person doesn't have the money. You are there to consult them, to understand them. And if you can help them, you make the sale. And you, uh, another thing that I, I will add here, uh, like it's, you know, you have, a, you have an obligation to make the sale if you can help them. 
Now, then, this is another thing that's very important. So at the, uh, usually when I talk with prospects, I feel like, oh man, I know exactly how this to help this person. Like I know, I know exactly what he needs to do. I have all the, the solutions inside of me. I, I know everything. You know, I, I can see clearly his situation, what he's doing wrong, what, what, what the person should do, what the prospect should do. And, you know, if he, uh, so exactly, I have exactly what the person needs, but you have to like, uh, you have to like um, feel like when, when you feel this way for a person, you have, you have to have that inner obligation to make the sale because if you don't close the sale on the call, you will never speak with that person again and he will live with the same problems probably till the day uh, they die. And I'm very serious about this. So you have an obligation to help them. And by helping them is actually making the sale. You know, as a salesperson, you are not some, something that rips people off. That's the wrong way of viewing, of viewing this. You are someone that actually helps. You know, what you're selling is of value because in the long term, that person will save a lot of money, will save a lot of trouble, a lot of struggles, a lot of emotional pain because of you. And you have to understand this. You have to understand that if you don't close the sale today with this prospect on the phone, you are doing them a disservice. You are actually hurting them. You are making their life, their lives worse because you don't, you don't uh, focus on actually closing the sale. You are a bad person because you don't sell them. You have to understand this. This is very, very important. You have to switch that. I, I know it's, in, when I first started, I felt very bad to ask for money. You know, why? I, like, why am I asking for you? I, I, I should do this for free, you know? Uh, this person des needs my help and so on. I, 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 like, I was this, like, um, you know, this uh, Jesus, you know? I just wanted to do everyone for free and help everybody. But, you know, what you do is valuable. It has value. Like you can measure the value. When you think like the, the problems and the, the, the things that will happen to the prospect because, because, because of your services in the future, you have to understand that this is very valuable. Like if you can help someone, let's, let's say you are a business coach and you help someone make uh, 10K more a month. Well, isn't it obvious to ask like, 2K or 3Ks, 3K for your services, if you can help them make a profit of 7K? Of course it is. So, but it is like, this is obviously true with life coaching and, you know, helping people solve their emotional problems. You know, uh, getting to, a, for example, a person, let's say, has problem, problems in their relationships, um, or in their, in their pri intimate relationship. So if that person doesn't solve the problems, he, they will have like, they will suffer a lot. Maybe they will get through a divorce and, you know, you lose a lot of money. You lose a lot of, you, you are stressed out. You are alone. You are, you are depressed after, after a divorce. So in the end, the person will lose a lot more if, um, if they don't work with you and don't pay with you like $3,000. $3,000 to help a person going through a, a very bad situation is worth more than not, uh, than like trying to, uh, like feeling you, you're asking too much. You're not asking too much. On the long term, as a value perceived thing, uh, offer, you are doing them a favor for asking such a high price. In, in, the, first, um, in, the, in the first place, asking a, asking a high price for your services will actually help them be more committed and responsible and actually invest, you know, invest like their energy and motivation into actually doing this. If you ask like a low price and something like insignificant, people will say, ah, I'll try this. Like it's, it's nothing. If it works, okay. If it doesn't, I didn't lose anything. It's just 100 bucks for this coaching session. So yeah, I don't need to invest my commitment into this. So you have to understand this too. Another thing is when the meeting is uh, scheduled, you have to call the prospect at the exact, ta exact time. This shows like seriousness. It shows like you are an expert, you are a professional, you don't um, like, uh, you are organized and you 
actually um, honor the prospect's time, you know. Also, keep a calm and centered attitude, you know. Uh, don't try to like, um, don't, don't, don't rush into asking questions. Actually, I would say being more silent than talkative, than talkative is, uh, so, or like talking too much is actually uh, is, is uh, hurting your, your conver conversion rate. So just be calm. And if you, if you don't know what to say, just shut up. You don't need to say anything. If you don't know what to say, just keep quiet. And when the proper question comes to your mind, then, you know, ask it. You don't need to like fill in the silence. Let the silence stay there. Don't try to uh, like fill up the, the awkward moments or like the, um, you know, because, you know, it, it, it happens. Like sometimes you don't know what to say, but just shut up. If you don't know what to say, don't say anything. Wait for the proper thoughts to come in in your mind and then, then speak. Another thing, when you ask a question, shut up. Seriously, shut up. Let the prospect talk. So, you know, some people when doing sales, they, they, they ask like a question like, okay, so um, uh, how, what are you selling? So, for example, let's say I'm a, I'm a business coach. So in my case, I'm, I'm, usually, I'm usually asking, I'm also like a life coach and a business coach, but when I'm coaching entrepreneurs and I usually ask like, life related questions and also business related questions because i'm trying like to to see the life of the prospect and also the business of the prospect but if you're selling like you know helping someone with stress and anxiety or helping someone with their relationships or something you if you ask a question like you know um so how's your how's your relationship going and then you you don't say anything you just keep quiet because like you will be tempted to say things like, so how, how's your relationship going? Because, um, uh, you know, many people have, uh, these days, many people have, um, have a bad relationship and, you know, uh, it, it happens to, to it's, it's okay to have, like, don't try to, to, fill in, to, to fill in the, just ask the question and then shut up, don't say anything. You know, because sometimes you, you, you will feel like you, you, you will feel to, uh, ask another question like to complete the previous question, but you don't need to do that. Just ask the question and then shut up. Let the prospect talk. And you have to understand that you will speak only 20% of the call. The, the other 80% would, will be only, um, only for the prospect. And another thing, after the prospect finishes an answer, just stay quiet for a few more seconds. Because, you know, usually they have something to, to add up. So if, if I say something like, so um, let's say it's like I'm a, date co uh, a dating coach. And, it, and I would say like, oh, so how many, how many dates have you, did you uh, go to in, in the last six months? And, you know, the, the prospect won't, won't answer me the question that I just asked. We'll say, yeah, so... Yeah, it's been a, a pretty rough time for me. Uh, I didn't uh, go to. I, I I I went on Tinder and I went on uh, you know, uh, Cupidon and uh, I went to all these apps to find dates. And uh, yeah, so it was really hard for me in the last few few months. But but the prospect didn't answer your question, you know. So you just shut up. You you wait. And at some point, the prospect will realize that you are not, you are not someone to be fooled around with. You know, you are actually waiting for the, the answer. You're waiting, you're waiting for the number. How many dates? And you know, the prospect, like, will feel awkward and will try to, to like, uh, uh, will will talk more and will try to. Um, to give you the, the answer that you're, ex, you're expecting. And, and, and if, he, if the prospect didn't, doesn't, then you will just ask again. So yeah, so I'm just curious, like how many dates have you went uh, in the last six months? You know, you, you ask the same question, but in a different way. And the, the prospect will, uh, you, 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 you stay on that question until the prospect answers it, okay? And also I would, uh, I would, I would, um, 
as a life coach, so I did some life coach. I, I did a lot of life coaching. So when when you do life coaching, usually the prospect wants to connect with you. So you can use like um, you can use things like you know I definitely understand you. I totally feel you there. It sounds like blah 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 is really important to you. Am I hearing correctly that? Just to like show the prospect that you are listening to it, to to him or her and connect with with the prospect okay and also like act like the expert you are don't justify explain like try to prove your prospect something you know when you're going to a doctor and for like the fir- like the first consultation when you let's say you have a problem with your uh, i don't know uh, lungs you know you're, you're you're feeling a chest pain you know when you're going to a doctor the doc- the doctor you know doesn't justify himself he he just uh, the doctor adopts that attitude of an expert you know as an authority you know he doesn't like try to ex- yeah so i was in college and i studied this so i have the answer to to this because if he if the doctor would do that you will feel very like why is it why why the doctor is trying to like show me that he knows what he's doing like what what why he's telling me all of this you know so you, you just act like, like that expert. You don't have to like explain and justify and, you know, because you will feel tempted after, after saying something to just justify and explain like why are you good and why, why the person should work with you. But you don't do that because the doctor doesn't do that. You know, the doctor won't tell you, yeah, so I have a degree, so I have a degree. Uh, I ha- yeah, I finished my college, so I, I took... Um, I have like big grades and uh, really high grades and uh, because you don't care if if the if the doctor would tell you that he would scare you and like he would you think like is this really a doctor like he's he's acting strange weird like like he's trying to prove me something and, and explain me like he's not really confident on himself so that's that's another thing you you need to consider so this is before the call. Now, when you are in the call, step one is to build rapport with the prospect. And it's usually around two to three minutes, this step. So this is very important. Like uh, the first step is actually you, you never go to the next step until this step is solved. You never go. Okay, because if this step isn't solved, you will not make the sale. I promise you. So you tell you, you say something like, hey, name. Uh, it's great connecting with you. So how, how is your day going? So, um, you know, you, you're trying to like connect. And, you know, the prospect usually says, yeah, I'm doing fine. Because the prospect isn't connected with you yet. And, you know, you try more. And, yeah, you, you know, just curious, like, where are you from? Where are you calling from today? You know, and the prospect will say, I'm, yeah, I'm from New York. But, like, again, it's like dry. It's a dry answer. So in order to like build a connection and build a rapport, you know, first of all, you have to do your, your homework. Again, I would, I would do your homework. Um, collect some da- data about your prospect. So uh, if you can, for example, if you can, maybe you have his Facebook profile or his Instagram or something or LinkedIn. You can go in there and see like where is the client, where, where is the prospect from, you know, like this, this is before the call. You, 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 you can do this, like you can see where, where the client is from, like what he does, the things that he's, he's, he's interested in, like some, some posts that he, he has on his wall or feed. And, you know, because you can use that to connect with them, to find... Um, to, f- to find a thing in common with the prospect. So if he says like, I'm from New York, you say, oh yeah, I, I really love New York. I have a friend from there. And actually, it's a, it's a client of mine. And, uh, you know, he, I, uh, he, he invited me to, to go there in the summer uh, to visit him. But again, you don't invent, like you don't lie. It, it has to be true, okay? You don't use this to... Uh, manipulate and uh, you know lie you, you find something in common with them if it says about New York then you say something yes yeah, so um, 
I was looking on, I, I don't know, you, you, have to, you have to have something about New York, okay, that, that's in common with them. Like, you can answer the question like, what, what's the weather there right now? And here's, the prospect will say, yeah, it's sunny. And you say, yeah, here is sunny too. Here in, 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 uh, in Romania, it's sunny as well. So uh, we're on the same page here. Like, you have to find something in common. I would say weather, it's a little bit weak, but you have to find something like on a deeper level. Um, it helps like if you, if you can say, yeah, I, I work with a lot of people from New York or I, um, yeah, so New York is great. I, I, I work with a lot of people from New York because, you know, uh, there are so, uh, there is so much potential out there. And uh, yeah, I, I really love people from New York. They are serious. They, they, are, they are some of the best clients I have from there. You know, and you create like this, this, uh, this rapport, you know, this helps a lot. I'm, I'm telling you, this helps a lot. And also, basically, this is the thing that I'm talking, uh, I've, uh, I'm talking right now is here, like you can say, you know, I just checked your profile or website or post and I really like, and you say something specific, you know, um, for example, uh, let's say that someone po does a video, you know, does a live or a video and you watch that video to see like what the prospect does and says and you say, yeah, I really like that you support, you know, the idea of uh, environmental, you know, of recycling. Yeah, I, I actually am doing that right now. I'm, uh, I'm recycling my, uh, my everything that I've, I've thrown away, I thrown, throw away uh, paper, plastic, you know, uh, glass and, and, you know, metals and so on. So, yeah, I totally agree with you here. Like we should, we should do this. This is something um, uh, very urgent. You know, we need, we need, we need to do this to save our planet. And see, you've connected with him. If the if that person has a value, something like he, the the prospect, you know, wants to save the planet, then you, if you do that, if you also have that value, you share that with with the prospect, and you connect. And you have something in common, you know. You have like you've you've built that r rapport, and you don't go next step until you build that rapport. I'm telling you, it's very important. And here, like you'll also build trust and intimacy. You can also say things like, if you're in life coaching, I would also say things like, uh, before we get started, I want to tell you that. This call is completely confidential and you are in a safe and secure env environment. Probably that's not correct, but Google will, co will correct me. In, in a safe environment. So everything we discuss here is stays here so everything we discuss here stays here okay so then you say this you say you say okay name great well let's get started with this call shall we you know doing this i've, I've done this a lot of times and you know i'm uh I have so much experience in this that that um, I just I just know you know I, I do this like uh, intuitively when I'm on a call with with someone I just know that something's not right and I need to to say something and you will do the like after doing like 100 calls after just 100 calls you will so after 100 calls you could you can say so you can say that you you kind of know how to do this. So you have to go past 100 calls uh, to actually get some experience. But like, you already have like everything that you need in order to, to make sales. Like actually, actually when I, when I first using this approach, um, I've, I've made the sale from the first call. So uh, my, my first life coaching client was uh, from the first call. So it was, it was so, it, it's, it, it was so much, such a boost confidence because then it was very easy for me to get the next clients. And step two, lead the conversation. So name, look how this call will go. I will start off by asking you some questions about you and the results you are trying to achieve. 
and if it sounds like we're a good fit and I can help, I'll explain what I have to offer and how that works and everything. And at the end, you can make a decision if you want to be a part of it or not. Is that okay? And always like wait for the approval of the client. Like, you see here, shall we? You, you like ask for approval to, to, to go to the next step. And of course the client says yes, you know, it has never happened to me for, that the client says no. And if he says no, you just repeat this, you know. So this, some clients probably will, some, some prospects will say like, yeah, no, I don't want you to ask, to ask me questions. I want you, I want to ask you questions. And you, you say again. So name, how this call will go, how this call is going to go is that I will be asking you questions about you and the results you're trying to achieve. And if it sounds like we're a good fit and I can help you, then I'll explain what I have to offer and how that works and everything. And at the end, you can make a decision whether you want to be a part of it or not. Is that okay with you? And usually, you know, the prospect will say, oh, okay, fine, fine, fine. Because this, this set up, sets up the, the lead. You know, you are the, the alpha in this conversation. You are the expert. You are, you know, that authority. And the person has to like, because if the person doesn't, um, how to say this, doesn't, doesn't consider you as an authority, then he will, he will not buy from you. He will like, um, uh, consider you like, a, like some sort of joke, you know? So you have to like be that, that strong and confident expert. Step three, find their core motivation. So tell me name, what motivated you to schedule this call with me? And I already told you this, some, some people will answer, yeah, it's interesting guys, I saw your Instagram page, I saw your video, and yeah, I, I wanted to connect with leaders like you, with, with like people, very, you, you sound so smart and I wanted to talk with you. But that's, you know, you didn't, he didn't give you anything. You know, he, so he, took the free time because I'm smart. Like the, per the prospect is, in is on this call because his motivation is that I'm smart. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. You know, remember the prospect is always thinking about my problem and my result, my desire. He's not thinking about you, he's not thinking about your video, your website, your Facebook page, your followers, your likes. He's not thinking about that. He's thinking about what can I get from this call? What, how, how can this person help me? That's what he, it, it's in his mind. So you dig deeper and say, what do you mean by uh, you liked my Facebook page? Well, um, you know, the, the prospect will answer, well, I really like that part where you talked about um, relationships, you know? And tell me more about that. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm in a bit of a struggle right now with my girlfriend and um, it's very hard to like connect with her and probably if, if, if I don't do something, we will, uh, we will uh, end the relationship. And see, now the prospect can tell you something. Now you have something and you already found their core motivation and when you find their core motivation, you can move to the next step. The next step is to build a picture of where the prospect is right now. So, remember the, the graph, like where the prospect is and where the prospect wants, wants to go? Yeah, remember always, like this is like the thing that motivates all of us. Now, I was watching like a, um, like a, um, like a course of Jordan P Peterson and you know, he, he, he used this framework as well, you know, what is and what should be. And that's what motivates us, you know? And what is? Basically, we are now building a picture of what is. So, the way you do that is you, when you ask questions, you have to like clearly build an image in your mind of the prospect of the prospect situation. Like, you really have to see the prospect doing those stuff. So, let's say I've put here some questions so that you understand like how this goes. So, uh, let's say we are in a dating niche, so this, these are only examples, you need to, to, to change them. So you say something like, so you are finding yourself alone on weekends? You know, if, if the person, you know, doesn't have any, you know, any, 
like the, the the prospect wants like a girlfriend or a boyfriend you ask you you ask this question so he will t he, the prospect will 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 tell you, you know so over the last two years how many dates would you say you have had what what uh, would your life look like five years from now if you don't deal with this problem today? What would happen you never, if you never got this problem solved? You know, they, so here, you, 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 sometimes I don't have a script. Sometimes I just ask questions, just to, just the way that you know the, the way that the prospect is uh, is telling me stuff. You know, because I want to see, I want to like imagine. I want to feel, I want to connect with the person. And if, if the person says, yeah, I'm, I'm alone on weekends, I don't know what to do, I'm sick and tired, I have no life, no friends, no money, I'm alone, and every girl that I've come in contact with, you know, rejects me. And and I I, I just, you know, of course, it's very important to have a script and, and questions uh, prepared. Like, I right now I have questions, like I have the most powerful questions prepared, so it's not... I, I recommend that you have a lot of questions prepared, and like, like a script. And if you don't understand something, um, if you don't understand something clearly, you then follow up with another question. You know, you, for example, in this case, I would say, okay, so um, what have you tried? You know, to to find you, a partner, or what do you feel is stopping you from you know getting getting a girlfriend or a boyfriend? Or, you know, and I, I, I want to see, I want to see this picture very clearly in my mind. The next, so after you build, you, you build this image, you basically, you have to measure it. You know, you, get, you, you have to get specific data, like turn their situation into something measurable. Because if you don't measure it, you don't know if you've helped the client produce a transformation. This is very important. So let, let's say we are in a weight, in the weight loss niche. This is very easy because we actually just measure the the weight, you know, the pounds or the kilograms that the person has. And then, you know, after the after our coaching program, we measure again and we see if the person lost some weight. If the person did, then perfect. We help. We help the person. But if this person said, you know, over the last two years, I've I had only two dates and. You know, though these girls. Uh, refused me, rejected me. Then we, we got a specific data. Two dates, two rejections. So we are now where where the prospect is. Okay? Like I would I would put like the most important thing. If, let's say if it's if it's a transformation in in you know in health, I would put it like in kilograms or you know measurements of the body. If it's like a mental health, I would put like so how many panic panic attacks do you have or how many on a scale from 1 to 10, how stressed would you say you are? Or from, on a scale from 1 to 10, how motivated would you say you are to getting, you know, blah, blah, blah. So you have to like have a specific number here. Step 5. Make the prospect aware of the pain consequences of the current situation. You know, because, you know, if the prospect isn't aware of the, of the, of the pain, and you know the if he doesn't imagine the pain and you know the bad future that would happen in if he wouldn't solve the problem then he won't like feel motivated to buy and solve it so that's why you have to like to uh, to make him feel that pain and that consequence if he doesn't solve the problem because that it will happen he the, the prospect just didn't took the time to just didn't take the time to imagine it to like really think about it so you say, so do you have a plan to solve this? So the, the prospect, yeah, I don't. I would actually put here this. I would say, what would happen if you never got this problem solved? And he, he's already imagining, you know, he's already imagining like, oh man, I'll be alone, I'll be depressed, I'll be, you know, and how do you feel when this happens, you know, or how do you feel? And, is this situation costing you in other areas of, of your life? Relationships, money, health, you know? So you make the prospect feel the consequences and imagine the consequences of 
if he's doing like this, if he, if he continues like this, okay? Because he now has a current situation. He's a, he, like, we know exactly where he is, but we, the, the prospect and, and us, and as as a coach, we don't know where the client will be if he continues or she continues like this. And we also have to paint that picture in, in the prospect's mind and also in our mind. Okay? Then after we... So we never, we never go to the next step until we solve this. Step six. Help the client build a clear picture of where he wants to be. So, okay, name. if we were having this conversation 12 months from today, you can put here like... You can replace with six months or I usually, uh, I usually let 12 months. And you are looking back over those 12 months. What would have needed to happen for you to feel happy with your results? And this, this question is very powerful. For, first of all, this question makes the prospect think in the future and also think like working with you in the future. So it already like preframes the prospect into working with you. He already imagines working with you and after a 12 month period, he like, he's done with your, with your services and you know, he's, uh, he's seeing how that coaching program worked with, uh, with, with him. So it like, it, it pre-sells in some, in some sort. And he will tell you like, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. And basically he, he will describe you there the the picture of where he wants to be or she i'm gonna use he for the sake of just not repeating she uh, but you know the prospect can be a a, a, a man or a, or a woman it doesn't matter and you i'm curious what's why is that so important to you so you you wrap this up into like values and emotions and you know why this matters to him and meaning and what's your motivation for that how would things be different for your life if you if you achieve that, I would say this is like in the step seven, but like these two steps, step six and seven is like in the same step because you, you don't need to like, um, you can ask questions from here, here, or you and here too. Like, you know, you, you, you just, you just want to see the current situation and like the, the, the consequences consequences of it and you, you, and you then you want to identify the desired situation and like the benefits of it. And you know, how would things be different, you know, um, in your life if you achieve that? How would getting to, you know, that, the, like he will tell you here what, what's that. Um, so here you replace it like how would getting to uh, like let's say 60 kilos or 70 or $1,000 passive income have a positive impact on other areas of life. Let's say maybe you talk about mindset or you talk about, you know, there are so many niches out there. We're getting to, um, to becoming free of stress and anxiety have a positive impact on other, area of, of your, other areas of your life. And uh, of course it would, but you have to paint that picture. You know, paint the picture of the benefit he will get of, and the results. Because if you don't this, he will not see the value in paying you so much money for your services. He will, he will not see the value of actually doing the work or and actually be commit, being committed to this. Okay? So, um, st step seven. Make the prospect aware of the benefits of the desired situation. I already told you this. So how would, how would you feel if you got this, this, and this? Would achieving this have an impact on other areas of your life? I already said that. Uh, and here you see I have two notes. For example, the, the prospect will say, yeah, I want, to, I want to feel, I want to be present in my life and enjoy my life. I feel like this stress and anxiety is like raining my life. Um, so I, I, I want to like enjoy and be able to go out and, you know, have a, have a great time with, with friends and family and, and so on. And here you include, you know, case studies. You say, yeah, I definitely know what you mean by that. I was working with a client, you know, Miles. Um, you, you actually say 
the, the client's first name to, to make this even more cred credible, but you don't lie. For example, if you, have a, if you had a client in the same situation uh, named John, you say, yeah, I definitely know what you mean by that. I was working with a client, John, uh, who, ha who was in a very similar situation and he was like very, very stressed and anxious about, you know, he, he had a lot of things to, on, on, on his mind and like stressed out, overwhelmed, burnout. And I helped him to, in three, in three months, I helped him to completely relax and live in the present and not care about the negative things that would happen in the future and just enjoy his life. And now he's living an, he's living an amazing life like he, with his, uh, with his uh, girlfriend uh, or you know, wife and um, he's, he's feeling amazing. And when you say that, it helps a lot because you build credibility you build like you you like share a testimonial you actually show that that person exists it has a name it's john and you describe like their situation in a clear way uh, it shows that you don't make this up it's not something you invent on the moment it's actually a real client with a wife that you know had this problem and now you helped him solve the problem and if you don't have any clients right now that's okay you can use your own story like you can say, yeah, I definitely know what you mean. I was in the same situation two years ago and I was really stressed and burnout out and anxious and I couldn't see my way out of it. But after I applied, I, after I applied, um, but like, but after uh, three months, I have, I have, I have applied uh, some techniques and uh, I, I discovered, I discovered a way to, to solve this. And now I'm feeling this and this and that, and I'm free of, stress and and all of this and i'm feeling amazing right now and uh what you're doing here is showing that you know how to solve this problem It's showing the person that you've gone to the risk to this and you solved the problem okay step eight make them prove to themselves they don't have the control because you know some people won't buy coaching because they will think you know i can solve this on myself i don't need to to hire a coach like only the people that have tried anything they, and, they, and they are desperate will hire a coach. But people that didn't try too many things, they will think like, I don't need to, buy, I need to, I don't need to buy, you know, coaching program. I don't need to hire a coach because, yeah, I can do this on myself. Like, I just haven't tried hard enough, you know. But you are making them admit they can't do it. They are fooling themselves. They are lying to themselves. And people do that. People think, yeah, I can quit smoking. Yeah, there's no problem. I smoke because it's it's fun and I like it, but if I want to more, I can quit. And they are, they are in denial. And you have to make them like confess that they can't do it. Okay? And you do that like, so, okay, name. Um, you are, you are now. Okay, name. So you are now at, you know, you're feeling stressed and anxious and you want to get to a place where you enjoy life and feel present in the moment and actually uh, like go out and relax and enjoy life what's stopping you from achieving that on your own and um, when you say this they'll actually think about the things that they are stopping uh, them to achieve the desired result and um, notes like you have to make make them admit they can't do it on themselves, on their own. For example, let's say, let's say uh, it, it, the person is a smoker, okay? And you say, so if you, can, so, if you, if, so if you can quit whenever you want, what's stopping you from achieving that on your, on your own? You, you, you didn't already quit, you know? Why, why don't, why, what's stopping you from, from, from quitting? And you don't, like, this is very important. You have to make them, like, say something like, um, you know, make them, they can't do it, so they can't, they are in denial, or make them admit they would want to do it faster, or make them admit they want someone who's already done it. This is very important, because they, they will never buy your coaching services if they don't admit to themselves that, actually, I don't know how to do this, and I'm fooling myself around, I've been trying this, I've been, I, I said to myself, I've, I'm going to quit smoking for like two years now, and I, and I couldn't, so... Probably, I can't. And they will tell you. Step nine, commitment and determination. Okay, name. So you're currently 
now where you are right now. So here you basically, um, where you are right now, like, so you're currently smoking two packs of cigarettes every day. And why not just stay where you are? Like, wh why? No, why not just stay where you are? And you didn't, you sh remember to shut, up up to shut up after every question. Don't try to complete it. Let the person think. And that silence is okay. Don't feel the need to fill it up with useless words. And is this really affecting your life? What specifically is affecting your life? And what happens if you don't change it? Okay, and when you are you wanting to fix this? Okay, so the prospect will ask, actually, you have to like let the person, I'm just reading it. So let the, let the prospect answer to gain commitment and determination. Okay, so I know that you are wanting to fix this now, but how committed are you to make this happen? Okay. Step 10, permission to bridge the gap. Okay, Nimi, I'm totally confident I can help you with that. Would you like me to tell you about what I do? And the, pers the prospect will say, yeah, sure. Now you, you, you state your expertise. Well, I'm a professional coach specialized in helping, you know, people with stress and anxiety or people with helping uh, couples, you know, uh, improve their relationships or, you know, improve their relationships by a, you know, three or five month coaching program or in, in three months or less or in five months or less. I usually work with young couples and I help them too. And basically here you have to fill in to replace like in a way, so you want to state these statements in a way that clearly speaks with the prospects. You don't, you want to think, you know, that's me. I need that. This is my situation. This is a perfect fit for me. And you want to say it in a confident, calm, calm and powerful way. So here you're actually like, um, you are, you, how to, how to say it? You mold, you, um, um, you adapt for the person that you're talking to. If the person like is a, is a man, you, you see here, I usually work with men and I help them too. And you already like have notes and you know the, their, deser their desired results. And you say, and I usually, if, if, the, if, the, if the prospect told you that um, they want like live in the present, um, lose some weight and um, let's say, um, connect with their girlfriend or with, with, with his girlfriend, you say, I usually work with men and I help them to live in the present, lose, lose weight and connect with their loved ones. So you want to say it like in a, in a way that's really, that really speaks for them here. So you state the expertise um, for them, like in a way, in a way that speaks for them. State your expertise in a way, in a way that speaks for them. Okay. And then, then you shut up, you don't say anything. Like I, I would say here to just, um, don't like speak, don't like let, let, let this, let, let this statement sink in. Be silent. Wait for the prospect to actually ask you for, 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 for details about the program and how you do it and so on. Because, you know, people are, um, you know, in the, in the old ways of selling, people were usually, um, if you don't, if you are, are actually silent on, on the phone, what, that, what this happens is, is this turns around. You're, you're not trying to convince anyone of buying. You let them ask you, you let them ask, you let the prospect come to you and basically sell themselves. Okay. And you wait for the prospect to say something. You don't say anything. You wait here. I will say, shut up. I would add here. And you know, the prospect will say something like, um, 
So how this works, so how, how do you do it? it? Sounds great, but how do you do it? And basically here is, is the offer. Remember that, remember that in the second module, I told you to build your offer. Well, here you, you insert it. You say, you know, the first step is to do this, the first step we'll do that, the second step, uh, the third step we will do this, and so on, blah, blah, blah. And we will do this over a period of six months, and I will help you to blah, 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 blah. And uh, we will have private coaching sessions, and uh, uh, I'm going to help you with this, this, and this. And you just shut up. And usually, like, this description should take around two minutes, and it basically says what you do and how you do it in a uh, 3,000 foot view way. So in, in like, like in a big picture way. And also I'm going to read these other notes as well. So describe your coaching program in a clear and easy to understand way. When you present it, do it in a way that doesn't solve their problems. It's, it's very important, this. Because if you solve the problem, uh, they, will, they will think like, yeah, I, I know how to solve this on myself. I don't need to buy this. But they don't actually. They, they, you can't solve their problems in a in a free session, like while describing what you are going to do it, you can't solve it. So you you might actually not try to solve it. Don't talk about the features and small details. Keep it in a big picture so you keep your prospect fixated on the outcome, not the processes or features of the program. So you always talk about the results. You know, remember that the prospect is is motivated by by where he is right now and where he wants to be. So you keep the offer fixated on solving the problem and achieving the desire. And after stating, stating the offer, use the power of silence. Okay? Just shut up. And again, you create that sense of, you know, that, you know, you're, you're putting that, um, you, let's say the prospect feels like he's not, the prospect won't feel like you're trying to sell him something because, you know, you usually sales people, they just speak and talk and they don't let you to, to, to ask anything. They don't give you that opportunity to, for silence. But here you are, you're doing, we are doing the, you know, the complete opposite. You know, we are, this is a new way of selling actually. And I've discovered this. It's very powerful. You don't try to just talk and, you know, fill the prospect's mind with a lot of garbage and things they don't, they don't want to hear about. And they just want to tell you at the end, I just think about it, I'll call you, I'll get back to you, bye. You know, here you, we are switching that. And we, let, we are letting the prospect uh, ask us. So, uh, again, we're creating that silence. So, uh, he will, uh, the prospect will ask you about the offer until like the prospect has a clear picture of the program. Um, you don't go into price after, you know, stating your offer in a clear way, I would say, in a clear way. So, b for example, some prospects will, answer, will, will ask you like, okay, and what's the price? And you say something before giving you the price. Um, is there something you want to ask me about the program and how it works? Uh, so, so the prospect will say, no, no, no. He will say, are you sure? Did you understand the first step? And you, you, you want to verify because the prospects lie all the time. You want to verify. Do you, do you understand how we are going to do in the steps two, in the step three? Do you understand that? Yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. Okay. Well, so the normal price for this is $3,800. But I have discovered that those who decide fast always become the best clients of mine and we do amazing work together and we have amazing results together, working together. So for that reason, I have something called incentive-based pricing where if you make a decision on the call with me today, I waive $1,400 of the investment and it's just $2,400. And then you shut up. This is like... Please note, don't talk anything after you just said your price. Let the prospect sit in silence. The prospects usually want to change the subject and not make a decision. That's why you don't talk about anything else. This silence can last between one to two minutes and let your prospect be cornered, cornered and give you an answer. This is very important. You know, sometimes when, when it's about the price and, you know, about closing the sale and actually like, Okay, making a decision, the prospect will like to, 
to just distract you and, and, and tell you about stupid things, but you, you stay about here, you don't speak about anything. You just wait, you wait for something. And um, so here like, is basically closing. So you have to wait for anything like, you know, what are the next steps? How can we, how can we get started? Or how can, or how can we move forward? You know. Um, so after you just stated your price, you wanna you wanna wait for for anything that sounds like you know. Okay, so, uh, so how how can we get started? Or what are the next steps? And you say, okay, so great, so we can get started right now if you want. And again, wait for words indicating the prospects want to make the payment. For example, even like, how can we move forward? You can say, well, how, how do you want to do it? Credit card or wire transfer? Visa or MasterCard? Credit card or PayPal? You know, depending on what your way of payment is. And you know, you know that the moment where you go to a restaurant and you know, you ask for the bill and the waiter comes and says, uh, so it's card or cash? You know, th that's how the waiter closes the sale. That's the, the same way you are going to close your sale. You're going to ask for, uh, or, so it's wire transfer or, or credit card. And you, you're basically asking for, for closing of the, the sale. And the prospect will say, yeah, so we can do wire transfer. And so, oh, great. So I'm going to send you the, the bank details and please do the wire transfer uh, until, in the till, so we can get started or until the, the, the end of this day. Okay, so s most of the time it happens like the, no, not most of the time, but um, it will happen that the, the prospects will have like ob objections, you know. Maybe you haven't solved a fear, you haven't solved like an, uh, a result, they didn't understand, they don't trust you or something like that. So we have to understand that we don't accept a maybe. We only accept yes or no. So we don't accept, can you send me more details over email? We don't accept, I'll get back to you. We don't accept, I need to think about it. We don't accept, uh, I need some time. We don't. Note, usually prospects lie because they are afraid to decide. They say things like, I need to think about. You need to find out what they are afraid of and solve that. Sometimes it's the money. Sometimes it's the trust. Sometimes the partner spouse. So how do you verify it's a lie? So for example, uh, um, if the prospect says, I need to think about it, you say, assuming you will need to think about it and you find out that this is a good fit, what would happen then? You want to see, you want to see if the prospect is lying to you because it, probably it is. If he says something, if he say, if they say something like, yeah, I will work with you and, um, I will work with you. Sure. I will work with you and uh, we will get started as soon as, as soon as possible. But, but they don't usually say that. They usually say, well, I still, I would still need to think about it, you know, and that's the way you, you, you project them into the future as the objection is solved to see if it's a really, uh, real objection. This is very powerful. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm, why, what I'm, um, teaching you here, like are some really powerful sales techniques. Like this is worth like a lot. So that's how you, you verify if, if it's, if it's a lie, you know, let's say, uh, let's say the prospect says, uh, I need to talk with my, my spouse about it. Assuming you talk with your spouse tomorrow when, when you said you will do, and, um, the, the, the spouse agrees with you and you find it's a good fit. What would happen then? And the, the prospect will say, well, yeah, then we are, we are going to work together. Sure. I'm going to, I'm going to make the payment and we, we get started. Now, you know, that's, that's not a fear or something you didn't solve. It's actually a real objection. It's something like the prospect really wants to speak with their spouse. And I would go even further to say, yeah, is your spouse around there? Can you put, can you bring uh, your spouse over the phone and we can, we can settle this over the phone or we can, we, we can, sure. We can set up another, uh, a short meeting tomorrow with your spouse over the phone. Um, so usually people, so I, I had some prospects that 
this was a real thing. They, so they, they just wanted, wanted to, to speak with their spouse and then they, get, they got enrolled in. So sometimes they don't lie, but most of the time, most of the time they lie. And if they say like, yeah, sure, we will continue, we will work together. And, and you say, so what do you do from here? How can I make this a reality for, for you? You always want to uh, close the sale. Not like, so you don't tell them like, let's work together. So you want to become a client? Do you want to buy? Okay, okay. Let, let's, hi, come on, buy, buy from me, buy from me. No, you don't, you don't close that way. You say, so what do you do from here? You let the client say, well, we will work together. So you're saying you are in, right? You're saying you are in, but uh, you need to speak with your spouse. And they will say, yeah, yes. I would actually, like, you know, after, after some time, you will get so experience, experienced. And I usually use something like this. You know, you know um, people usually um, talk with their spouses and the spouse doesn't know about what this thing is about. And uh, they get put down, you know. They get discouraged by the spouse because they, the spouse doesn't know. They doesn't know about what this program is about. So I would, uh, I would recommend, so it's, yeah, it's totally fine. I would actually, I, I actually recommend you talk with your spouse, but please be aware that your spouse will, will more likely uh, turn you off. You're, you're get discouraged and tomorrow you'll tell me that you don't want to get enrolled. And when you say this, they actually think, oh man, yeah, the spouse doesn't know. That's why you can continue. Uh, that's why I would suggest that you you let me talk with the spouse and explain her or him and so we can move forward. Otherwise, I can already see the outcome. I, I do this a lot and usually the spouse doesn't know and only discourages you and destroys your dreams and uh, plans. So, because it, not because it's a bad person, but because they don't, they don't know. And that's how you solve it. You know, you, you always want to find the fear the the fear that they have and solve it on the phone there and it happened you know sometimes it happened like the person said okay i don't need to speak with my spouse i mean okay you i mean uh okay let's let's do it you know because i solved it that that was the problem actually you have to like identify what's the problem and then solve it some people will say i don't have enough money um i don't have enough money and um you know, you ask like for, let's say in this script, it's 2,400, you know, dollars. But if they don't have the money, um, you say, okay, you know, I understand, like, I understand finances can be a challenge and I always try to help my, my client and I help people in that situation. So tell me, uh, is this really something that you want? Because if you don't think it's a good fit, that's totally okay too. You know? Another thing that's very powerful, and I would, I would, I would add it in, in the beginning, is to just take, take them away. Take the offer away from them. Because when you do that, they feel like, oh, so this person isn't trying to sell me this? It's, it's telling me that it's totally okay not to buy, and if it's not a good fit, that's fine. Oh man, it sounds like, I mean, the, the, the prospect will think, whoa, this person is so confident he, in, and the, his offer is so, like, he's not even trying to sell me on this. He's just selling, telling me that if I don't want, that's okay. So it must be a good offer. It must be something powerful. Okay, so they, they usually buy, you know. Um, again, you have to identify the problem. The problem there was that he didn't believe it was a good program. It was like, it, it was worth it. You have to like transmit and show them that you're so confident about your offer and your program and your coaching program that you're not afraid to just, to refuse a client, to say to a person, you, I probably, this is not a good fit for you. It, will, it, will, it won't work for you anyway if you're, not, if you're not committed to get into it, you know? And... Um, the, the prospect will say, no, 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 well, I want it. I want to get in. And then you say, well, how can I make this a reality for you? So how can I make, so what do you do from here? So what do you do from here? And usually the, the, the prospect will say, well, can you have like a payment plan? Can I 
pay this like in three uh, installments or something like that. And yeah, we offer that. And you can accept like three installments, you know, you can accept like, uh, you know, uh, let's say you can divide it this by three and, you know, get like 800, 800 and 800. Let's say you have, a, if you have a coaching program over a three month period. Um, and, you know, this way you can help your, your prospects get into the, the, the coaching program. All right. So that was it. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, you will have some, um, some questions about this because, you know, it's, it's really about practice. And the way you get better is just practice, practice, practice. You know, you have to practice the sales call and repeat it and practice it with like, you know, a friend or someone or, you know, um, practice until you have mastered it. Probably if you leave some comments, uh, you know, in, in, um, you will find some people to, to get connected and, and, and practice this and practice this with. So don't, don't worry about not knowing too much and, you know, feeling afraid and scared. Uh, that's totally fine. All you have to understand is you have to do this long enough. It will become a habit. It will become very easy and uh, you will just close them on the phone like, like crazy. You know, you, you, will, you will increase your conversion rate and you will know, you will feel the qualified clients and you will do this like a pro. So I'm really happy to have shared with you these powerful lessons. Um, these, you know, these are some really powerful lessons and you have to put it into practice and uh, you will have some amazing results. I'm really happy to have shared this with you. And um, now all you have to do is put them to work and become a successful uh, person and make a lot of money, help a lot of people and, you know, have a great, have a lot of fun. Thank you for watching this video. Thank, thank you for staying with me for so long and um, good luck. See you on the next one.